Have you heard Tesla sales are down, Elon's getting mad, and even the early adopters are trading their vehicles back in for internal combustion vehicles? Welcome back my superfluous seeds of sunshine. Today let's talk about what's going on at Tesla land and the idea of this whole electric vehicle market, the fact that it's clearly not where a lot of the early projections were, and the fact remains is a lot of people are getting wise to the fact that electric vehicles aren't necessarily the solution to all of our environmental problems. Yes, I've been getting emails who have actually gotten back to me and said, you know what, I bought a Tesla, but they didn't necessarily tell me that I needed that special charger. And then they go back because they live in this apartment complex and they weren't allowed to upgrade their power system. And then they were stuck using the 120 volt low grade charger and having to charge for 20, 30 hours of basically to get the vehicle back online in adequate time frame. I've also heard of other people saying, you know what, I like to take my trips regularly to the mountain or to the coast and I'm starting to realize that some of the chargers aren't always ready to go. There's lineups. And quite clearly, it's not as practical as I hoped it would be. Now, sometimes a trip 12, 14 hours down the road to get to the coast might mean it takes me three or four days to get there because of all the charge time in between. I've also heard of some people saying the cost to actually install those chargers at home are almost cost prohibitive. You would think that in all of their infinite wisdom, all of these OEMs, including Tesla, would get wise to the fact that one more incentive to buy for the consumers and say, look, we'll install all this hardware for you. We'll get you plugged in. We'll even eat some of the costs, maybe possibly front up some of the initial utility bills to get you online. Just something enough to get people motivated, not here's your keys, here's your car, see you later. No, people are getting done with it and the early adopters are even starting to figure this out. Then of course we had some of these blisteringly cold snaps here in the last year or so. We had two weeks here in February or January and it was enough to destroy both internal combustion vehicles that weren't rated for, as well as many electric vehicles that weren't parked in the garage were finding themselves having to constantly tether up while they're outside and maybe going to a mall, to the gym. They had to constantly charge their vehicles up. So people are starting to learn the hard way. Even Hertz is dumping a lot of their inventory, their used inventory, realizing that insurance costs are up on the rise. Insurance companies are getting wise to the extensive battery replacements, how fragile they are when they go. They might have to front 20, 30, $50,000 for new battery change. The windshields are quite exclusively expensive and a lot of the body panels are unique and quite pricey. And insurance companies are starting to get wise to that and realizing, you know, we're gonna start jacking up the prices. We have to make money. And then of course, Tesla is realizing they're on the horizon. We've got manufacturers like BMW, Porsche Taycan, Audi e-tron, and even the Chevy Bolts and EU, EU Volts and Bolts and all of that other junk is coming down the marketplace electrified and ready to challenge the likes of Tesla. But Tesla, yes, they've evolved and they've created this new model, this new Model 3. It's now to be produced in Fremont, California, and Tesla has openly admitted and said, you know, that was part of the lower, lower sales numbers here in the first quarter of 24. But I think we're all looking at the writing on the wall. With stiffer competition, the fact that this was all a big novelty at least for the first little while, and the fact that even the early adopters are starting to pitch the keys and handing back in their special cards and get back into an internal combustion vehicle, simply means that it was nice while it was there, tried it, got the postcard, I'm moving on. And so now people are starting to say, you know what, I don't know if it's for me. And then all of this smack dab in the midst of this cost of living crisis. Just try to afford anything today. I was walking by the other day, $80 for a slab of meat here at Costco. What? Even some of the grocery stores are charging, you know, $8 for a loaf of bread. And and of course, anything that represents real food, sure, you can get that junky pre-packaged stuff. You know, I'll give an example, granola bars the other day I came across, normally they were about yay big and uh, you know what, you'd normally sell them with six in a box and now I was in the other day, they've upped the price on that box of granola bars and it's no longer, you know, that $5 that it used to be. Now it's $6.50 but each bar is smaller and there's only five bars in there but it looks like the same packaging, it's just they've dwindled it down just enough. But this is where consumers are getting. The cost of living and food, inflation prices, and obviously the, the cost of lending and borrowing is still hanging in there. It's at an all time high and it's not, doesn't seem to be relinquishing anytime soon. And you know, the, the US reserves and the Bank of Canada openly admit that yes, we're, we're waiting for that trigger point. And I know in Canada they're saying, well, we need to hit 2% 
on inflation, that's when we start triggering and we can drop interest rates, but that's not happening. And they're waiting literally almost, almost, honestly, it's almost in spite, it feels like. Even though we're close, it's just, nope, we got to hold our own. Yes, jobs are up. People are working, but they just can't work to enough and afford enough to buy that car, that house, or that, you know, any of that. The cost of living is just too extraordinarily high right now. If there's one thing that I can say about Tesla, they're not inexpensive. And while they're making some, you know, adjustments to some of their pricing in the last couple of years, they've made some price slashes, which have basically screwed the outgoing people, the people that maybe bought it two years ago at this price, at say $150,000. These people come in, in a year later and all of a sudden that car's listed at 130 brand new. It's just more insult to injury and a poke in the eye for those people that got in early in the game. And now what we have is a situation where people are catching on, they're getting wise to this, heavy tire consumption, the insurance costs, of course, the limited charging infrastructure, the cost to set that vehicle up at your own house, and all of this other, and then it becomes political. And I don't want to talk politics, it depends which side of the spectrum you fall under. We know politics are extremely polarizing today. And then it really speaks to that. And people that are really trying to make a hard stand, you know, leftists want to buy the Teslas. That, that's definitely, it becomes more of a political statement for them. They want to get on board. But then you've got the, the folks on the right that are like, absolutely, hell no, I'm not buying that. And I'm not having it. And I'll never see me driving one of those units. So you have these very polarizing conversations and this tug of war as to who's buying these. You're almost splitting the sales opportunities down the middle, if you will, because that almost excludes a big part of the market that just will never have it just because of their political beliefs. But I'm not here to discuss politics. I am here to say that Tesla has overshot some of their projections on the sales of their new Teslas. And as a matter of fact, they expected in the first quarter of 2024 that they believed they were going to sell 457,000 units collectively between their Model 3, their Y, their small SUV, their X, which is their big SUV, as well as their Model S, the premium vehicles. And while, yeah, the Model 3 and the Model Y are definitely the most popular in the Tesla world, even those sales are down. So much, in fact, so that Tesla's getting worried. Customers yeah, I'm not having it. There's just too much money. I'd rather fix my old hunk of junk, keep that vehicle on the road than buy this new fancy dancy technology induced unit. Ah, I don't need that. It's too much money anyway. I'll wait. And so while Tesla sold about 369,700 and change units, that's collection between the threes and the Ys, those are the most popular, most affordable vehicles. Although they're not cheap and they're not truly affordable, they're the most affordable. The fact remains only about 20,000 of the upscale vehicles that, that would be the S as well as the X with the big, you know, Falcon doors. Those are the vehicles that are just not selling at all. Even with the strong incentives by Tesla, people are getting onto this and the vehicles have literally slumped aggressively, I might add. And this trend continues on. Now, of course, not just because the cost of Tesla and the cost of living, people aren't really getting on board, but the strict cost and of course, ownership experience isn't quite what people hoped up for. Obviously, the short ranges and the battery costs, insurance are all enough to choke a horse and people just, just don't want any part of it. You also have the competition, which is definitely bearing down on the backsides of Tesla. Now, Tesla really doesn't have a whole lot to answer as to why their sales are slumping, but they do sort of blame international markets and, of course, some of their, their foreign manufacturing facilities and saying, you know what, things aren't necessarily, there's been some trips and falls, but hey, don't worry about us. We'll be just fine. Well, I don't know if they'll be just fine. Time will certainly tell. And the electric vehicle marketplace, definitely while pushed and aggressively mandated by the US, Canadian governments, and even all across across Europe. Think about those developing nations and some of those countries like Africa that don't even want it, can't afford it, don't have the infrastructure, the means, the financing. And so what you just generally have is it's a developed nation vehicle. And if the developed nation doesn't want any part of this, nobody else is going to have it because a lot of these other markets just don't have the funds. So they're just trying to get their hands on a 300,000 mile Toyota. They don't even care about a modern day Tesla.
And even with great incentives like aggressive lease rates as well as even the new model restyled Model 3, of course with federal tax rebates of $7,500 incorporated gets you a price of over $37,500 for a brand new electric vehicle. The fact remains is people aren't buying, sales are down and they continue to slump. And it'll be interesting as the year goes on how this trend continues because I truly believe that people are had enough, they've finally become enlightened to what's going on in the EV market. They're now suspect and skeptical as to what the government's doing and their motivation and people and more and more people are electing to try to find either other options, whether it's a hybrid vehicle, we talk about you know affordable vehicles like the Maverick Hybrid or any other Toyota, Lexus hybrid vehicles, for example, or just stick with the pure internal combustion vehicles because they know they what they have and they know how to make it work. And with all of that said, be sure to check that. You know, new and used truck and car manufacturer dealerships have screwed the customers for so long and now they're paying the price. I hope to see each and every one of you on the next one. We'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.